I'm going to show you how to make an autumnal waterfall cake. So it's going to be two tiers of chocolate cake. I'm going to decorate it with chocolate Swiss meringue buttercream, so we'll show you how to make that. It's going to have a naked effect as a finish, and then it's going to have a waterfall of decorations. And it's a compilation of toasted meringue, dried apple slices, chocolate ruffles, meringue kisses, macarons, all sorts. So a very exciting cake lies ahead. I'm going to start kind of in a backwards order. I'm going to start off with my apple slice decorations. Loads of you asked me how I make these, so I'm finally doing this tutorial, so I hope you find it helpful and realize how easy they are to make. The thing you do need is something like this. So this is a mandolin, obviously not the instrument, but it basically slices things really, really thinly. It is really dangerous, so always use the hand guard because if you slice your fingers. All you need is one apple, because one apple goes quite a long way, and I'm going to put it in the hand guard and simply slice the apple. It's going backwards and forwards on the mandolin. And it makes these beautiful thin slices of apple. Now you can try this by hand, but you're probably not going to get very far. And now I'm going to dilute some food colouring. So I've got three glasses and you can obviously colour it however you like, but I'm going on an autumnal theme, so I'm going to do some reds, oranges and yellow. So I'm going to dilute some gel food colouring. So it just needs a couple of drops. And I'm just going to mix the colour in the water. And now I'm going to place the apple slices in the diluted colour and it will stain the apple. So like I said, you can do any colour you like and some colours tend to be stronger than others. And make sure you get a full covering. It looks as though the colour has really transferred onto the apples, which is great. Now I have a baking rack here which can go directly into the oven and I've actually got some tweezers because I want to avoid staining my hands and all I'm going to do is lay the apple slices onto the baking rack. It doesn't matter if there are still pips there because as the apples dry out the pips will just fall out. So you can see how many slices you can get out of just one apple. So I'm going to bake these in the oven at 100 degrees Celsius. It could be 100, 120, it doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to leave them in there for about an hour to an hour and a half until they are completely dehydrated. And that is it. It's really, really easy to do. You don't even have to color them. You can leave them natural apple uh, color and just have them as a snack. It's probably just about the only vegan thing I make. So I'm going to pop them in the oven, carry on with the rest of the cake, and by the time it's time to decorate, these will be done. So now it's time to prepare the sponge cake. So I'm using my chocolate cake. Now I have just released a chocolate cake tutorial on my channel, so be sure to check that out. And I've got six inch and eight inch. Now eight inch is just double the six inch recipe. It's as simple as that. Divide it into two tins, and now I'm going to slice them into two to have a total of four layers. Before I slice them into two, I'm just going to chop off the very top of it. So using the same technique as always, I'm going to go round and then through and I can use this as a guide for the next one and then divide each of these in half and then do the same with the 8 inch. So I've now got eight even layers and I'm going to soak them with my simple sugar syrup. Now this is just vanilla. You can't really flavor a sugar syrup chocolate, but the vanilla works just fine to add that extra moisture. So I like soaking them at this stage and then I can just build up the cake with the buttercream and not have to worry about this stage. So I'm just going to pile them up in the order that I'm going to build it up with. So Save the top and the bottom for each tier. And now I can work on my filling. 
So the filling for this cake is going to be chocolate Swiss meringue buttercream, which is another highly requested recipe of mine. And all it is, is my normal Swiss meringue buttercream, and then you add chocolate. So I've melted some chocolate. Obviously when you melt chocolate, it gets hot, and you don't want to put hot chocolate into buttercream, otherwise it melts. So I've had to leave it to cool, and it's really cold at the moment, so I actually had to be careful that it doesn't cool too much. And this is 300 grams for this amount. It depends what chocolate you're using. If it's a really strong flavoured chocolate or a darker chocolate, you may need to put in less than if you were, for example, using a milk chocolate or white chocolate. So what I'm going to do is put this on to mix and then slowly pour in the chocolate and let it all incorporate. And it's as simple as that. So I'm just going to give the bowl a scrape down just to make sure that all the meringue and chocolate is incorporated. But it is so light, it's so delicious, it literally tastes of chocolate mousse. So this is a very light version of a chocolate cake. If you want like a more dense version, then you should probably fill the cake with a uh, chocolate ganache. So the buttercream is done, so I'm gonna fill a large piping bag, get the cakes and get my turntable out, and then I can start building the cake up. So building up the cake, same as usual, I've got my cake board on my turntable. I've also made a double batch of buttercream, so I've got two very large piping bags full of the buttercream. Got my scrapers, palette knives, and I'm also going to add some salted caramel in between the layers, just to give it an extra bit of sweetness and deliciousness. So to start, I'm going to apply some buttercream on the base. I take my first layer of cake and press it down. Notice that I used the flatter side of the sponge face down and now I'm going to pipe on a layer of buttercream. And using my step palette knife I'm going to smooth that out so it's nice and flat. So you can go ahead and put on the next layer of sponge but like I said I'm going to do a layer of salted caramel. I'm just going to drizzle it on. I mean, chocolate and salted caramel is just a winning pair. Now I'm gonna go on with my second sponge and repeat the process until I get to the last layer. And then the last layer I'm going to flip the other way around so I get the flatter side of the sponge on top. Make sure that all the layers are aligned. And now I'm going to fill in the gaps using the piping bag. And this just makes sure that all those gaps are nice and filled with buttercream. And I'm also putting on the excess buttercream for the crumb coating. A Little bit on top. And now I'm going to encase the whole cake in the buttercream for the crumb coating. So I'm going to scrape the excess off the top and try to create a nice flat surface. And because I'm going for that semi-naked effect, I want the cake to start coming through. Now I'm going to go around with my side scraper and make the sides nice and straight. Because you've added the chocolate to the buttercream, the buttercream may be softer than usual. So if it is really soft, you can pop the piping bag in the fridge for like 10, 15 minutes just to firm it up slightly before you build the cake. And when I'm scraping, I'm concentrating on the very bottom of the scraper. And then naturally the rest of the scraper will stay nice and straight. If I start applying pressure at the top, you get a kind of slanted edge. So I'm really focusing on that bottom corner. So once you're happy with the sides, you can tidy up the corners as well. So from the outside inwards, and then scrape the palette knife clean. And then once you're happy and it's fully crumb coated, it can go in the fridge for about 20 minutes to half an hour until it firms up. 
And now I'm going to repeat the exact same process for the six inch. The only difference is that the six inch is gonna sit on its own size cake board. So I've put a six inch cake board on top of a larger acrylic disc and build the cake up in the exact same way. So the cake has been in the fridge for a good half an hour and the buttercream is nice and firm, not coming onto my hands. I like going over naked cakes with a second layer of coating um, just to kind of fill in the little gaps and make it neater all around. I'm obviously going to add the six inch on top, so I'm going to go over the six inch um, with its second layer once it's on the 8 inch and I'll show you what I mean but in the meantime I've got some leftover buttercream which I'm just going to put on thinly over the crumb coat so all around the sides and then the top as well and this is also so I can work on getting those really sharp corners that I may not have got on the crumb coat so I'm going to push the buttercream almost over the edge and once again scrape the edges. And I am still scraping away the buttercream because I do want some of the cake to show through. But this just really neatens up the naked effect. And I love this effect especially with chocolate cake. I just love the dark sponge showing through the slightly lighter buttercream. Just going to tidy up the corners. And just before I get the six inch, I'm going to insert some straws because this is going to hold the six inch cake up. So there's no pressure on the sponge itself. Trim them to size. You can see I'm not doing a central dowel because it's only two layers, I don't think you need to. As long as there's support here, it should be fine. And now I'm going to get the six inch. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of buttercream for the six inch to stick to. And then I'm going to get the six inch off that cake board, but it's still on the six inch cake board. Carefully place it on the eight inch. And now go over that with the second layer of buttercream and scrape it like I did with the eight inch. And then I'm gonna put this back in the fridge until I'm ready to decorate it so it's nice and firm and doesn't move around. Now, if you aren't doing a naked cake and going over with a solid layer of buttercream, I wouldn't recommend decorating the six inch on top of the eight. Maybe do that separately, put it back in the fridge and then stack it. I only did it at the same time because it's naked and it doesn't matter if I affect the top of the eight inch cake. So this is gonna go back in the fridge and then we're gonna get decorating. So just before I make the Italian meringue, just wanna show you that the apple slices have completely dried and they're gonna look really pretty amongst all the decorations. So for the Italian meringue, same way how I make it for my macarons, it's double the amount of sugar to egg white. So in this case, I'm doing 80 grams of egg white, 160 grams of sugar with a little bit of water. Heat that to 118 degrees Celsius while I whisk the egg whites and then pour the sugar in and it will cook the egg whites and make a glossy meringue. So I'm going to do exactly that. Okay, it is decorating time. So I've put the Italian meringue into a large piping bag. And what I'm gonna do is kind of pipe a waterfall shape over the two tiers and then I'm going to go over it with a palette knife and really get some nice texture going. Mm. 
Now I'm just gonna go over and kind of just move it around and create some little peaks using the palette knife. I love this stuff too much. <laughs> so delicious to eat and looks really effective on a cake as well. Now the most important thing is that the cake has to be cold because we're going to blow torch it. So just word of warning, kids, it's fire, it's hot. Grown-ups, it's fire, it's hot. Be careful. Um, so, but what I'm gonna do is put it onto a medium flame, pointing away from you. And then gently toast all the meringue and get a nice, a gradient of browns and the whites. Doesn't that just look awesome? I love toasted meringue. Now I'm gonna go on with all my different toppings. So I've got some macarons here, I've got the dried apple that I made, and I've also got some of my chocolate ruffles that I've dusted in gold, and I'm just going to display them going down the meringue, and then leaving the rest as it is. I think it's a really nice way of decorating a cake, just focusing the decoration on the waterfall, and then of course, finish it off with some gold leaf and glitter. And of course, a touch of glitter, as always. And there you have an autumnal waterfall cake, complete with the apple slices, toasted meringue, macarons, chocolate ruffles, which you can find on my channel. All my tutorials are there. I hope you enjoyed it. Please try it out yourself. And if you do, tag me on Instagram at George's Cakes. And if you want to see any other tutorials, then message me or write in the comments below. Lots more tutorials on the way, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you very soon. Bye.